Hello, everyone. Welcome. I'm so glad you're with me tonight. I haven't been able to join you for the last several weeks, so I'm glad I get to be with you tonight. Um, if you're able to get this signal, give us a note. Just post something there. Let us have a comment from you and let us know that you're joining us tonight. We just want to make sure that you're getting the signal okay. We, um, we have lots of rain here. Oh my goodness. We've, we've been raining a lot. We're glad for the rain, but, um, it's just more than what we're used to seeing. So <laughs> we're glad you're with us tonight. Um, I've got some announcements here, some dates here to give you. I am coming to Lakeland, California, no, Florida, <laughs> Lakeland, Florida, this weekend. So March the 24th, I will be in Lakeland. That's a Friday night. And then Saturday night and Sunday morning, I'm going to be in Plant City, Florida. So if anybody uh, is in that neck of the woods, come and join us. We'd love to have you um, get on with us and uh, get in the services with us. Also, of course, we have our annual whole, um, prayer, prayer conference coming up. And so we want to remind you the dates for that are April the 4th through the 6th right here in Murrieta. We'd love to have you join us. Again, if you can't be here in person, the next best thing is online. So make sure that you join us. And my, 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 that our Tulsa Miracle Crusade is coming up next month. My, it's hard to imagine that we're already here. I mean, didn't you just get your Christmas tree down? I mean, like I did. <laughs> but April the 16th through the 20th, the Miracle Crusade in Tulsa. So we would love to know that you're joining us for that. Um, we have, uh, we're asking them to register, right? Mm -hmm. So um, make sure that if you have not already and you're going to come to Tulsa, the Tulsa Crusade, that you take a moment, go to our website and register. Of course, people who don't register can still come, but uh, when you register, it just helps us to kind of be prepared on how we can better host those that are coming. And then you can go to our website to find out we have some more Miracle Crusades coming up. Well, in May, we're going to Paducah, Kentucky. Now, this will be our third year there, and that's going to be May the 21st through the 25th. At that, that is World Harvest Church of Paducah. So get that on your calendar. And then we're going up to Canada. It's been, what, maybe three years since we've been in Canada. And so we're going to go to Mississauga, Ontario, Canada, August the 27th through the 31st. So we're looking forward to that. And then we're going to be back in Georgetown, Texas. This will be our third time there, um, October the 15th through the 19th with our Miracle Crusade down there. So go to our website and get more information on those meetings, on those dates. And uh, we would love to have you join us if you can. Um, as I said, we, um, we're going to be in Florida this weekend. So if you can join us or you know of somebody down there that can join us, uh, be sure and tell them about it. Um, I am so glad that God has told us that for the year 2023 is an emphasis on faith. He said flourishing faith in 2023. And you know that's not just simply a confession to make. That is a directive that to us, it's focus on faith. Um, make sure you're feeding your faith, that you're not only feeding your faith, but you're releasing your faith. And so um, for this year, that is going to be our emphasis. And the reason is, is because where we're headed, it's going to call for our faith. Of course, every day, calls for our faith, to receive all that God has for us, calls for faith. And uh, it's just it's for us to emphasize faith because we want to, we want to be skillful. You know, the word talks about, and I don't have the scripture in front of me, talks about that when the harvest is ripe, you put in the sickle. Um, and, it, and how many of you know that sickle is what? Our faith. And we want to make sure, it says, get ready, prepare your sickle. Um, so what does that mean? Prepare your faith so that you can have a skillful 
faith so that you can reap all the harvest that belongs to you. You know, harvest belongs to us, but we have to, just like we plant in faith, just like we, um, we make our confessions of faith, we reap by faith. And so the things that belong to us in Christ, we need to harvest those things. And it's a sharp, skillful, active faith that is able to do that. So we want to we want to make sure in 2023 that we become so full of faith that our faith becomes violent. And what I mean by violence is the word tells us uh, Jesus said the kingdom of heaven suffereth or invites violence, and then it tells us what that is. And the violent take it. <laughs> so, so what is it? The violence of faith is what he's talking about. That. When you get so full of faith, you get violent about it. In other words, I'm not coming off of this until I receive in manifestation that which I've received in my spirit, that which I've received of God's word. I'm going to make sure I lay hold of that. I'm going to hold fast until this realm gives evidence to what I'm believing for. And that is a violent faith. Listen, when you're in faith, there's no fear. When you're in faith, there's no anxiety. Why? Because when you're in faith, you are in rest. And I tell you, um, I want to read to you. Let me read to you Psalm chapter 46 and verse 10. Psalm 46 and verse 10 says, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. What is that host? The Lord of angels. And um, so we have troops of divine, divine military on our side. But notice this. It says, be still and know that I'm in, I am God. So when we are in faith, we're in rest. And when we're in rest, we are doing exactly what Isaiah 46, 10 says, be still and know that I am God. Now, how many of you know being in rest does not mean being inactive in the sense of um, we know that it's God working that brings it to pass, but we are the ones who still have to actively release our faith because that's what the rest of faith does is that it, it's commanding it's speaking, it's uh, holding fast. And so when it tells us to be at rest, it does not mean that we basically become mindless and uh, inactive. We're active with our faith, but we're not with our own works trying to bring to pass what only God can work. And so it says, be still and know that I am God. So know this, when you're at rest, uh, you give way for him to work when you're in the rest of faith. So we could say this, that when you're at rest, you're the one provoking supernatural acts of God, that the, the miraculous can come into play when you take your hands off of it and put it in his hands. Because when he works it, it becomes supernatural. When he begins moving and working in your behalf, you get miracles. And so that's one thing that we have to realize that we have, when we enter that rest of faith, we're being still and then we're knowing that he's God. So we're basically inviting him and giving him permission to work. How many of you know it takes faith to sleep in the midst of a storm? It takes faith to rest in the midst of a storm. I remember uh, my husband, of course, went home at the end of 2013. And for the year 2014, God told me, he said, I want you to travel uh, visiting many of the churches because I want them to know that, um, that nothing of the plan of God, nothing of what God has called this ministry to accomplish is lost. And so I traveled a lot during the next year. 2014 was primarily on the road. And then when it came up to the year 2015, God said to me, he said, during this year, I don't want you to travel as much. I want you to travel very little. So, of course, I was still pastoring at the time and, of course, uh, working, running the offices and things. But when he said, I don't want you traveling much, do you know it took more faith 
to not schedule something than it did to schedule something? What is that? That's the rest of faith. Because when it says, as again in, in uh, Psalm 40, 16, be still and know that I am God. Basically, when you're still, his movement goes into work. When you're resting in faith, that you're not trying to handle stuff yourself, trying to make things come to pass. Put things in his hand. And I tell you, that year, I, I just cast the care of the financial responsibility of the ministry, it's in his hands. And so because I took my hands off of it, then his hands could fulfill what we needed. Amen. So it takes faith to sleep in the midst of a storm. And you know this, what did Jesus do? He demonstrated that for us. What did he do? When there was a storm on, he stayed on his pillow. <laughs> I mean, we, we don't have any account really uh, think that if Peter hadn't waked Jesus up. Remember when he went and waked Jesus up and he said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Um, I doubt Jesus would have ever waked up to deal with that storm. Why? Because he was at perfect rest on that pillow. And so, but, but notice what he did when he arose. He took command. I tell you what, when you're in faith, you're in command. I said, when you're in faith, you're in command. And he took command of that storm and everything changed because faith arrived. Um, after the storm was calmed, he turned it to the disciples who did not cause the storm. Now, listen to this. They did not cause the storm, but do you know what he said to the disciples? He said, where's your faith. So, because he knew if you're not going to employ your faith, you're not going to be in command. And uh, if we don't want situations and circumstances to lord it over us, we have to be in command. And the way we're in command is with our faith. I want you to look at Hebrews. You, you'll know Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 33. Hebrews 11 and verse 33 says, who through faith listen to this, they subdued kingdoms. My goodness. So by faith, kingdoms are governed. By faith, things change in kingdoms. Um, the wrong things are held at bay, and that's all through faith. It says, through faith, who through faith subdued kingdoms, look at this, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, out of weakness were made strong, waxed valiant in fight, turned to flight the armies of the aliens, and women received their dead raised to life again. All of this is through faith. Why? Because when you're in faith, you're in command. So I'm so grateful that God has us in this year, 2023, focusing on flourishing faith because that means that we're going to become more skillful with our faith and we're going to become more skillful in our command. Um, one of the things that I want you to see that's so important to this life of faith, if we want our faith to work right, we have to keep our heart right. So in this year of 2023, have a flourishing faith is make sure that we're just keeping ourselves right on the inside. Why? Because Peter said, uh, if your heart isn't right, there's no lot nor part in this. Meaning this, your faith won't work as it ought. And I don't know about you. I want my faith to work, don't you? Well, yes. I mean, and listen to this. We've been given. We have been given um, a new spirit. So you have a good heart. You have, we have a new heart, but we just want to make sure that we're walking in love. We want to make sure that we're not letting wrong things trouble us. What about this? Being anxious. Uh, remember what Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. Why? He's saying that if the heart is troubled, it's going to make it to where our faith is not effective as it should be. So we want to protect our heart from fear. We want to protect our heart from um, offense. We want to protect our heart from not walking in love. Why? Because all of these things have an effect on our faith and we want our faith to work as it ought. Why? It's not just enough to learn the principles of faith. 
um, remember what the word tells us, guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flow the issues of life. And so um, these are things that every single day we get to, we just get to check ourselves and make sure we're not letting ill feelings in, uh, resentment in, offense in. We want to stay in the flow of walking in love. Why? Because when we walk in love, our faith will work right. Remember what the word says, faith worketh by love. So guard your heart. And uh, if, if as we fill up our hearts on the word and our hearts get full of faith, uh, what's going to happen is it's going to give us a lifestyle to where we are receiving what we're believing for. Amen. And so we just encourage you in this year, 2023, flourishing faith, fill up with faith and run out anything that would hinder your faith. Um, because I guarantee you, every single one of us has have to pay attention that we're not letting worry in, that we're not letting doubt in, that we're not letting wrong words come out. Amen. We guard our heart. We guard our mouth. We guard our thought life, right? And uh, in doing that, our faith can flourish. And this is to be a year of flourishing faith. Amen. So we love you. We thank you for joining us tonight. We want to remind you that we have a midweek service coming up shortly. And we want you to join. And uh, some of you that can't be here in person, at least you can be with us on live stream. And so we thank you for taking the time tonight. We love you. And don't want, to, don't want you to forget, I'm going to be in Florida. So those of you who can join us this weekend there. God bless you. We love you. Bye-bye.